everybody. This is Esther. And this is my first live stream. So welcome. Um, I'm finally here and I hope to continue doing weekly live streams with Robin's help. So thank you for coming and supporting um, Learn English Live. Um, today we will be doing an English Q&A so please feel free to ask me some questions and especially your English questions and um, Robin is actually in the chat room with us here today to help me manage all of your questions and to help me answer all of your questions um, and today is the first live stream I hope that with Robin's help, I can do live streams every week on Tuesdays at 1530 GMT. So um, go ahead and please start typing some questions. And I see that some of you heard Ongi, so he is here next to me, my cat, Ongi. Um, and please go ahead and you may start asking questions. and. In the future, I will also be doing some basic grammar lessons. So I hope you will join me again for those. All right, so let's see who's here. I see a lot of people. Wow, thank you so much for joining. So let me scroll up and see. Okay, so I see a Jeanabu and a, a Louis. Good morning or hello, wherever you are. Uh, Arash, hi, how are you? Uh, a UK Android, hi. Let's see where. Okay, let's keep going down. Um, let's see, Tika Nurfitria, hello. Yes, you are not late, so thank you for coming. Um, Linaldo Halkip, good. Hi, how are you? Ziad Hosni, thank you for joining us today. Lily, ah, Lily, I think I remember Lily from the first Q and A. Miguel, good morning or good afternoon. I don't know, but hello. Rohan Chowdhury, thank you for supporting us. Uh, let's see, Thomas Yang, hello. Sarah, hi. Oh, I'm so glad you're joining us. Anand, hi. Thank you for joining. Grace, oh, thank you for staying up to join us today. Prakar, hi. And, oh, there's a, there's a name that I can't, pronounce because it's in Chinese characters, but hi and thank you for joining. Grace, I'm very happy to see you as well. I remember the comments that you left last time that were very kind. All right, Fanny, hi. Kiramat, how are you? And Thank you. You guys have uh, seemed very excited to be here today and I am thankful for that. So Hamza, hi, Balzak, Almani, wow, there are a lot of people. Adhi, Putrak. <laughs> Robin does look different, right? <laughs> That's because it's me today. Alex, hi, thank you for joining. Kiramat. Uh, yes, I am Korean American. So I was born here in America and my parents are Korean. Hi, Manny. Uh, Fanny, yes, I will try to do a live stream every week and I hope that you will join. Rim Rim, thank you. Good morning. Uh, and let's see, is there anybody that I've missed? Sulis, hello. Thank you for coming. Um, Ziad, 
I don't know if you would have been an engineer. <laughs> Is that what you're interested in? Then maybe, I don't know. Zakia, hello. Anand, I am good. Thank you so much for asking. How are you? Let's see. Oh, Hamza asked a good question. Uh, we miss your videos. What have I been up to? What have I been up to? Um, currently, I'm a student, so I've been busy going to school. Um, Adhi. Hi, Adhi. Uh, thank you for your welcome. And Lily, thank you so much for your kind words. I'm happy to be here. Sarah, oh, I, I'm not sure if I um, said that this was not your first time, but thank you for coming. Um, Ziad, thank you. I'm glad you think that it's awesome. Um, okay, Samar, thank you for letting me know. I will try to speak more loudly so that everybody can hear me. Uh, Kiramat, I will not be doing live streams daily, but I will try to do weekly, every week, Tuesday at 1530 GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. Oh, you could see Ongi is here. He's very curious as to what is going on. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Hi, Zakia from Indonesia. It's a beautiful country. Uh, Lufti, I am good. <laughs> you may hurt Robin's feelings if you say that. <laughs> um, let's see. Wow, okay, so Lufti is also from Indonesia. Hi, Ripin, how are you? Thank you for joining. And Sak, Sakti, Thai, hello. Billy, hi, thank you for joining. Um, okay, and we have our first grammar question. Ziad Hosni asks, uh, just I'm asking, is my sentence is correct grammatically or not? So the correct way to say that sentence or that question would be, is my sentence grammatically correct? Is my sentence grammatically correct? Thank you for your question. Essan, thank you for your welcome. And Anad, yes, a lot of people say I look Chinese, but I am not Chinese. I am Korean American. Okay, uh, we see a lot of people from Indonesia. That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> see, I think Kiramat hurt Robin's feelings. Um, so I've gotten the question, Esther, what do you study? So I am studying two different subjects in graduate school right now. One is school counseling. So um, it's to work in a school and help students there with their grades, with um, any problems that, are, that they are having with friends, family, things like that. And I'm also studying marriage and family therapy. So I can do the same thing, um, help people that have problems that are experiencing or going through some difficult times outside of school. So I can work with adults and children as well. Mm, Alex, I learned um, Korean through my parents. So ever since I was born, they spoke to me in Korean mostly, and that's how I learned. Oh, okay, thank you, Dio, nice to meet you. Okay, and I will speak louder. Thank you for the feedback. Hi, Daila. Good morning or good afternoon or good night, wherever you are. Thank you very much, Mat Mehila. Mm, okay, UK Android asks, um, how can I express this sentence in the past tense? I should not bring you with me. I think what you might be trying to say is, I should not have brought you with me. So you are showing maybe some kind of regret, right? Oh, why did I do this? I should not have brought you with me 
it was not a good idea. Okay, I hope that answers your question. All right, let's see. Oh, Prakar, thank you for the cat emoji. It's very cute. Uh, let's see. Cassio, hi. Oh, thank you so much for your support. Omani, I am so glad to hear that my videos have been helpful for you. That makes me very happy to hear. Lily asks, which one is correct? I don't care of eating very much, I don't care by eating very much, or I don't care eating food very much. Hmm. I think the best way to express this would be I don't care about eating very much. So the preposition that would best fit here is about. I don't care about eating very much. But Lily, I hope you do care because eating is very important. Kiramat asks, have I ever visited Pakistan? And no, I haven't, but that sounds very lovely. And maybe one day I will. Hi, Rimjio. Thank you for joining. My Hilla, May Hilla. Okay, can you teach me how to use had been and have been? Okay, this is a little bit trickier. So have been is used to talk about something that maybe you um, have started a long time ago and are still doing today. For example, I can say um, I have been a student for two years, right? So I started being a student in the past and I'm still a student right now. That's why I said I have been a student for two years. However, if you use had been, it's something that you started in the past or somebody started in the past and is no longer doing it. Um, so maybe, let me think of a good example. Um, uh, I could say I had been living in Korea um, Okay, let me go back. Had been you use when you started, someone started something in the past and you're no longer doing it. And, to, and then you show that something interrupted that. Something happened in the middle of that. Maybe something like, I had been living in Korea um, in, I had been living in Korea for nine years when I decided to move back to the US, right? So I showed the second part, when I decided to move back to the US to show that something interrupted that. I hope that answers your question. Um, Grace says, what's up? What's going on? What are you up to? What are the different nuances between those sentences when greeting? Wow, let's, let's take a look. What's up? What's going on? What are you up to? I would say that all of those three are really similar. They're casual. They're um, kind of just starting a conversation, maybe asking for small talk. Um, I, I wouldn't say that there are any really clear distinctions or nuances that separate those. I, maybe Robin can help me if he can think of any, but for me, I think that they're all pretty uh, alike. I guess with what's going on and what are you up to, those might be a little more specific. So um, it's more common to maybe call someone or um, and say, what's up, just to get the conversation going. Um, what's going on, maybe... If you know that they're up, they're doing something, you could ask, oh, what's going on? Or what are you doing? That's, I guess, if you more know that they are busy doing something. But mm, I don't really think they're that different. Thank you for your question, Grace. Um, Giovanni, Giovanni, hello, Esther. 
Thank you for joining us from Peru. Okay. Hello, Naima. Thank you for joining us. Parasite Studio. What an interesting name. Thank you for joining us from Thailand. Sarah, yes, uh, that's a great way to put it. I am like a psychologist. Um, I would say that the main difference is you're right. I don't diagnose or prescribe, right? So I don't decide or you know assess people and see really what kind of illness or disorder they might be experiencing. Um, not as much as a psychologist, I might be able to help with that. And you're right, I don't prescribe or give medicine because a psychologist would go to med school for that. Hamza, you have a better accent teacher. How do you acquire it? Well, that's a great question. So a lot of people say I look Chinese or, you know, um, uh, I look like I'm from a different country, but I'm, I was born here. So I've been speaking English for my whole life. So that helps. But um, maybe some ways that you could work on your pronunciation is by watching some uh, English pronunciation videos. And I find that um, sometimes listening to music or watching TV could be helpful. But I know that people have different opinions about that. So you'll have to decide on your own. Um, let's see. Lufti says, I am just make the cake or I just make the cake. So you put the word just there. So I'm thinking you're trying to show that you just finished making a cake. So I would say I just made the cake. I would use the past tense of make there. I just made the cake or I just finished the cake and now it's ready to eat or it will be very soon. All right. Oh, Hamza says, hey, uni, I think onni, right? That's the Korean word for big sister. Um, glad to see you. Do I have Instagram? So I do not have Instagram, but Ra uh, Robin is trying to convince me to get on social media. So maybe I will. And if I do, I will share that with you in the future. All right. UK Andrew says more likes, please. Thank you for that. So um, actually that brings me to, to my ne next point is that we are trying, Robin and I are trying to build this channel. So we ask that um, you continue to support us by checking the links in the de description. Okay, and I will talk about that more a little bit towards the end of the video as well, or the live stream. Okay. Um, Grace says, I was supposed to meet him. I could have met him. Does that mean I didn't meet him and regret it now? Are those two sentences the same? Wow, another kind of complex question by Grace. I was supposed to meet him. I could have met him. Um, I wouldn't say that those two sentences are the same. They are similar. Um, I was supposed to meet him means that was the plan to meet this man or boy, him, but I didn't. For some reason, I don't know. I could have met him means that there was the opportunity to do that, but I didn't. Um, it's usually showing kind of a regret. Okay, uh, I could have met him, but I didn't um, because I changed my mind or um, I ran late. So um, it's usually showing more uh, something like regret. And uh, you did ask that, but th those two sentences are not exactly the same. I hope that answers your question. Uh, Mehila, Mehila. Esther, are you married? No, I am not. <laughs> and Robin is uh, expressing some regret for UK Android. Um, 
Anand asks, what time will it be in India at 15.30 GMT? Uh, I'm not sure about that right now. It might be best for you to check online. Okay. It's uh, Kiramat says, when I speak English, I feel my voice is awkward. My accent is not good and it embarrasses me. Well, Kirma, I'm sorry to hear that. Learning a new language can be difficult, but with practice, it will get easier. I promise you that. Okay, so learning any language takes time and practice and effort, right? So it depends on how much time and effort and practice you put in. So I know that it will get better. Just keep practicing. Okay. Let's see. Oh, UK Android says that the kids are missing Mr. Shaw. And Mr. Shaw will be back. Don't worry. <laughs> um, Kiramat asks, I will learn English from you or I will learn English with you. Which sentence is correct? Oh, let me move a little. So you would say, I will learn English. Well, actually, you can say both. I will learn English from you. That means that I will teach and you will learn. Or I will learn English with you. That means that we will learn together. And that's true as well because I'm learning as I teach. Hamza, what's the difference between simple past and present perfect tense? Okay, simple, uh, simple past tense is just showing that something happened in the past. Okay, it started and it ended in the past. For example, um, I ate a cookie, okay? Um, present perfect tense, hmm. Now this question I haven't answered in a long time. Present perfect tense. Um, well, with the same sentence, it would be I have eaten a cookie. I guess the best way to describe it, present perfect tense, would be to show that you have tried something before okay so i have been to disneyland okay it's showing i have had that experience or you could say i went to disneyland that's the simple past tense right it's showing simply that i did something i started and ended something in the past um another example would be um I got a dog, right? Um, it's showing, hey, I got, I got a new dog. And I have had a dog means I ha uh, in the past, I've had the experience of owning a dog. All right. Let's see. I hope that was not too confusing, Hamza. Hamza, thank you for your question. Okay. Oop. Okay, Faisal Arjon. Hello, how are you? I'm Faisal from Morocco. Wow, hi. I'm beginning English. I can give uh, me an advice. How I doing speaking English? Okay, so there are some grammar mistakes in your question, but I think you're off to a great start. Um, so I will give you advice in my weekly live stream. So I hope that you keep watching. Thank you for joining us, Faisal. Um, Kiramat says, I seem very nice, polite, and amicable. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you and also very lovely. Thank you, Kiramat. Lily, I'm worried about you so much. Is this sentence correct? I think it sounds great, Lily. 
You could also say, I'm so worried about you. That might be a more simple way of saying it, but your sentence looks fine. I'm worried about you so much. That's okay. I'm so worried about you is also good. Moomin, hello, Esther. Can you give me about the term which is, okay, let's, um, let's see. Can you give me the synonym for someone giving birth? Mm, mm, giving birth. Let me think. So you might be, I wonder if you're thinking about the verb um, giving birth to. A synonym for that. Mm, let me get back to you on that one. Maybe Robin can help, but I cannot think of a synonym off the top of my head, which means just right now. But thank you for your question. Mayhila, Esther, it's interesting to interact with you. Thanks for the polite answer of my questions. Well, you're very welcome. And thank you for saying that. That's very nice of you. Subrata, a lot of students were working. Is this a correct sentence? It sounds good. A lot of students were working. And Moomin, I'm still thinking about your question as I answer these. Okay. Hamza, um, thank you. I, I will, I will, um, I do appreciate your questions and I will try to answer them. Um, but Robin does bring up a great point. I will do basic grammar Q&A in the future. Um, Mehila, I am from Nagaland. I've never heard of that place. Where is it? Mohammed Hossein. Hi, how are you? Thank you for joining us today. Zakia. I'm sorry, Esther. My network here is very bad. Um, let's see. I write a sentence and unfortunately it's incomplete sentence. Is this correct? Uh, Zakia, I would change your sentence to say, well, my network here is very bad. That's good. That's fine. Um, I write a sentence and unfortunately it's incomplete. You could say that. But because you used present tense, it would mean that you do that all the time. So every time you write a sentence, it's incomplete. So maybe you want to use the past tense. I wrote a sentence and unfortunately it was incomplete. That means you did it once. Grace asks, he sick of it. He is sick of it. He sicked of it. He was sick of it. Which one is right? Is this all the same? And yes, I'm sure that it's new for everybody. It's a little unfamiliar to have me here instead of Robin, but I thank you for your support and the kind words that you've been sharing with me. So, um, Grace, out of all those sentences that you've shared, the best, uh, the ones that make sense are he is sick of it and he was sick of it. You can use either one of those, but of course, he is sick of it is the present tense and he was sick of it is the past tense. So um, it's, as you probably know, it's to show that somebody is tired of something happening, right? They don't like something happening over and over again, right? So he is sick of it right now. He was sick of it. Maybe he's not anymore. Things might have changed. Cassio, what's the correct sentence? A, he haven't found his keys yet. B, he didn't find his keys yet. C, he hasn't found his keys yet. Out of those three Cassio, B and C are both correct but I would say that C is the more proper sentence. He hasn't found his keys yet. All right, and Robin reminds us that Shaw English has an Instagram account. So we would really appreciate if you 
subscribed to or um, joined Instagram <laughs> and uh, went to that Instagram page. Hi, Niraj. Thank you for joining. Um, Kiramat, I wanted to recommend my leave by you or I wanted to get my leave recommended by you. I'm not quite sure what that sentence means. You might have to give me a little bit more context. You have to, maybe I can help you if you can tell me when would somebody use that sentence. Is somebody trying to get some vacation time from work? Something like that. If you let me know, I can answer your question a little bit better, Kerma. Thank you. Alex, when I want to wish someone a happy birthday, but I'm too late, would I say happy late birthday or happy belated birthday? That's a great question, and I am often late in, in um, wishing people a happy birthday, and I always say happy belated birthday. Um, Niraj, you can talk to anybody here. Feel free to ask your questions. I think this is Anna. Anna or Aha? Hello, dear new teacher. Hi, my name is Hannah. Okay, Hannah or Hana. Congratulations. Well, thank you. I hope we will learn a lot of new interesting information with you. And I hope so too. And Robin is here so you can say hi. Um, all right. Choppa. Hello. He asks, if any item doesn't suit our stomach, we avoid that item immediately. That's true. But how to say in English that we stopped eating the item in a simple way? I think you could simply say, I don't eat blank. For example, people don't eat pork or beef. Ooh, sorry, Ongi is here saying hi. <laughs> So you could simply say, I don't eat pork or I don't eat beef. Ooh. Oh, there he is. <laughs> uh, he's very curious. Okay, so I don't, you can, I think that's a simple way of saying that you don't eat something because you can say because it makes me feel bad. That's okay as well. Um, Grace asks, the son looks like his father. Does it mean only appearance or does it also mean about his behavior? Grace, that's a good question. If you say that the son looks like his father, you're only talking about appearance. You could say the son acts like his father to talk about them acting, behaving similarly. Or you could also say the son behaves like his father. That's okay as well. Okay, Fenny asks, what's the difference between awkward and weird? That's a good question because they are similar in some ways, right? Um, weird, however, means more strange. Um, I could think of some examples, but strange. Uh, maybe if you see a cat on the street wearing a hat and glasses, right? I don't know. That's kind of silly, but that would be weird. Something you don't see a lot, right? Whereas awkward is more talking about something or somebody that is uncomfortable. So um, maybe you see somebody waving and you think that they're waving to you, so you wave back, but you look and they're actually waving to someone else, so you feel a little embarrassed, a little uncomfortable. You could say, oh, that was awkward. Or maybe um, you're meeting with many different people and then all of a sudden you hear, uh, or somebody comes and they're acting very strange, uh, not strangely, they're acting in a way that makes other people kind of uncomfortable not too much but just a little you could say oh he's awkward but that wouldn't be very nice sometimes weird people can make you feel awkward so that's a good way to think of it as well um, Dakshina 
I am reading the questions off of my laptop here. I'm looking at all of your questions on my laptop to my left. Munaim, thank you so much for your welcome. Okay, and Lily asks me to, to pronounce this word. Lily, this word is pronounced porridge. Porridge, P-O-R-R-I-D-G-E, porridge. I like pronunciation questions. They are easier to answer. Let's see. Okay, I'm a little behind. Okay, and Hamza asked me to speak more loudly, so I will do that. Thank you for your feedback. Mahila, Mahila, he doesn't know or he didn't know how to play. Which one is correct? So that's a good question. If he doesn't know how to play, that means he didn't know in the past and he still doesn't know now. However, if it says he didn't know how to play, that means he didn't know in the past, but now he knows how to play. So things have changed. So if you use the present tense, that means it's still true right now. But if you use the past tense, it means it was true, but it's not true anymore. Thank you for your question. Ziad or Zayad, hi. What is the difference between I have been in pyramids and I was been, oh, I was in pyramids? So um, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, I think the proper grammatically um, proper way to say that is I have been to the pyramids. Maybe you're talking about the famous pyramids. Um, I have been to the pyramids means I have had that experience, right? I did some, it's, it is very similar. Um, I have been, it's showing um, some of your life experiences. I have been to the pyramids. Um, if you say I, I was at the pyramids, again, if you're talking about the famous pyramids, maybe in Egypt, in Giza, um, I was at the pyramids. That simply means um, I'm just talking about um, a specific past experience that I went through. Okay, that it is a little bit tougher, but when you say have been, you're being more general. Okay, you're talking about some maybe some different things that you have done, some experiences. And then I was at the pyramids, it's more specific. Like I was at the pyramids last year. Usually you um, follow with a time period or time stamp a specific time when you use the past tense. Freddie, hello. Adhi, I have a question. How do you say IG and EG in real life? I already knew with etc., right? But I'm not sure with these Latin abbreviations. That's actually a really good question. So um, a lot of people get IE and EG confused, um, but I actually looked this up as well not too long ago. So IE, um, I think an easy way to say this in a sentence would simply to say in other words. So IE is in other words. You're um, simplifying something that you're saying. EG, you would say for example. Okay, so they're not exactly the same. EG is for example. And let me try to think of an example for you. Um, I could say... Many friends went to the party. For example, Tom, Dave, and Sam went to the party. Um, maybe I could say, the party was a blast. In other words, we had a lot of fun, right? So the first one, e.g., you're giving some examples. And the second one, i.e., you're saying the sentence again in another way to make it a little bit easier to understand for the listener. Okay, so we're almost coming to the end. I'll answer a few more questions. Hi, Kanji. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you, UK Android, for clarifying about the times. Anfel. Hi, my name is Anfel from Algeria. 
Thank you for joining us. Okay, and there Robin has answered Moomin's question a little better. Thank you, Robin. Hassam, hello, can I ask what's the difference between present perfect tense and past perfect tense? So um, Robin has mentioned that we will be doing more grammar lessons in the future. Um, these take a little bit longer. So I'm not going to answer today, but I promise I will answer in the future. But let's look at your second question. Um, what's, the me what's the difference between... I have explained the lesson to my friends and I had explained the lesson to my friends. Uh, okay, so yeah, when you give an example, it does make it a little bit easier. Um, let's see if I can give an easy answer to that. I have explained the lesson to my friends. Um, okay, it's simply showing that you did so you have done something. Um, usually when you say I had, explained some the lesson I uh, the past perfect tense um, I would say you show that something interrupted that okay maybe um, you were doing something and then something interrupted that I don't think that's a great response um, so I'm going to leave it at that for now um, and again we'll go back to that uh, in the future all right, what's the difference between born, B-O-R-N, and B-O-R-N-E, Kirma asks. Um, I believe a lot of words with uh, different, a lot of English words with different spelling, it could be the difference between American English and British English. Anfel, I'm glad that you um, plan to speak English. Grace says, I think you um, are going to be a really good counselor for students. You seem very kind and reliable. If I were your student and got some advice from you, I would follow your suggestions. Thank you so much, Grace. That means so much to me. Thank you. Um, Jean de Genabu, I think. I'm sorry if I say your name wrong. I'm hungry. I am frustrated. Do they mean the same thing? Actually, they don't. You can feel frustrated if you're very hungry, but they don't mean the same thing. Frustrated usually means you want something, but you can't get it. So you feel like something's blocking you. A lot of people feel frustrated when that happens. So if you're hungry, you want to eat, but you can't find any food around, then you might feel frustrated. Okay, um, so right now, um, I'm just going to um, let you guys know that unfortunately we will end the live stream in a few more minutes. So please get your last questions and comments in. And also please remember to, let's see if I get this right, like the videos, um, subscribe to the channel and join us on social media, okay? Thank you so much. So let's look at the last um, few questions. Um, let's see. Subtitled movie clips. Is there a rule I can follow to know if the vowel E is pronounced as the short sound of the vowel? Well, it's easier to um, see if a see if a word has a long e sound usually if there's an e at the end well let's see if there's an e at the end or if there are two e's those usually mean that it's going to be a long vowel a long e sound uh, ea can also show that it's going to be a long um, e sound okay robin asks that we stop the questions for a bit um, and let's see, Adamu Vin Vin Vincenzo, hello, Adamu says it's a pleasure to see you in the chat room and that um, you've watched many of my videos. Well, thank you so much for your support. Okay, let's see. Okay, so, um, Ab Abdul Rahman, how can we pronounce launch, lunch, launch, lunch, metal, metal? I, I would say those two 
sound pretty alike. Let me scroll down just to see if Robin is uh, okay. All right, so Robin is asking us to end our... Oh, wow, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was so behind. Okay, so let's see. As, okay, so it looks like I'm going to have to wind things down. Um, thank you so much. I know that I didn't get to answer all of your questions, but I really appreciate um, your enthusiasm. I really appreciate um, all the questions and all the support and all the kind things that you have said in this live stream today. And I'm so excited to join you again next week and answer your questions or teach you um, grammar. So again, before I go, please make sure to like the videos, comment, share, make sure to subscribe and get your friends to subscribe and to um, join us on social media. Thank you so much again, and I will see you hopefully all next week, Tuesday at 1530 GMT. Bye.